Hey everyone, this is going to be my labor and delivery story. Um, just letting you know what went on and brought us to this little one right here. Um, she's two weeks old today and she isn't really wanting to lay down a nap. It lasts maybe five, ten minutes at a time. Um, and she just wants to be picked up and so she's in my lap now and I'm rocking her so we'll be moving back and forth but um, I might have to stop and calm her down and then restart this but we'll go ahead and get started and I will start um, from my first appointments with my doctor um, you know with how I was progressing before on August 23rd I was 37 weeks two days pregnant and I had an appointment with my doctor and we did the um, group B strep test and I tested negative for that so that was good um, and he checked me that day and I was minus one station and my cervix was, cervix was completely closed um, but he said it was starting to soften so at that point really nothing going on. So at my next appointment on August 29th, I was 38 weeks and one day pregnant and I was still minus one station and I was one centimeter dilated thin and 90% of face. So we made a little bit of progress and with the, you know, effacement softening, all that kind of stuff. And um, my doctor said with first time moms, typically they... Um, the cervix softens first and then it starts dilating. So that was a good thing that my cervix, you know, was softening and um, all that good stuff. Um, and after, and that appointment was in the morning and that afternoon I started to get a brown discharge, I guess, from the cervix check. The next day, August 30th, at 38 weeks, two days, um, I still had the brown discharge until early evening and it was getting lighter and lighter. Um, and then that afternoon, I started losing pieces and chunks of my mucus plug. That was kind of exciting a little bit. I don't know if the cervix check helped kind of work that out. Um, you know, if I was already starting to progress some. I, I didn't know. Um, but that night, um, when I went to bed, I was waking up about every hour two hours with Braxton Hicks and sometimes I would get a little backache a little crampiness but nothing too intense nothing um, consistent anything like that so the next day August 31st I was 38 weeks three days pregnant and I was still losing my mucus plug um, some bigger chunks and some that had a little bit of pink bloody tinge to it I just started feeling just weird pains that day and just kind of off and um, every now and then I was feeling a little bit of crampiness and a little bit of backache but you know I didn't think anything of it you know that's just the uncomfortable parts of getting that far along in pregnancy. That night my husband and I we cooked a good dinner we so we had a nice dinner and um, then we went for a walk and a, a really long walk um, around where we live and everything. <laughs> And during the walk, I, I kept on having weird pains, and I just didn't know if it was Braxton Hicks, if it was cramping. I mean, I didn't know what it was, but I didn't really think anything of it. Um, and then when we got back, I got a shower, got cleaned up, and, um, and then I had been having um, cupcakes on my mind for a long time. And so I baked cupcakes, yellow cupcakes with fudge icing. And um, so I did that after I showered that late that evening and they were amazing. <laughs> so good. I probably got in bed around 10 o'clock that night. Starting around 11 o'clock or midnight, I was waking up with contractions but I didn't know at the time that exactly that's what they were um, and this is going on to September 1st 38 weeks four days pregnant and they would start you know in my lower back and kind of wrap around to the front and just a very mild cramping nothing too intense anything like that it wake me up and then it go away quickly and I'd go back to sleep and 
at first they were kind of happening maybe every 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and I was waking up every time. Um, and so then I was like, wow, like maybe these are real contractions and, you know, maybe I should start timing them. Um, you know, I was like, hmm, I started thinking. And so around 1.15 is when I like woke up and stayed awake and just kind of thinking about this and kind of waiting to see if one's going to come and um, I had already downloaded a couple of contraction timers and all those kind of apps on my phone. So I pulled one of those up and at 1.50 a.m. that morning on September 1st I started timing the contractions and the first hour they were about 10 minutes apart maybe a little bit more um, you know I don't really remember exactly um, and then around 4 a.m. they were around 8 to 10 minutes apart and that was when I was getting a little bit more uncomfortable laying in bed with them so I got out of bed, came into the living room, kind of got on the computer. I was on Facebook a little bit, um, you know, talking about, you know, what's going on. And, you know, I got quite a few comments from people. They were still coming consistently, a little bit more painful, but not bad at all. Like, n nothing at all. So that I was questioning if this was the real thing or not. You know, is this false labor? What's going on? Around 5 a.m., I started having frequent loose bowels like I was going to the bathroom and going a quite a, a bit I think I went maybe like five times um, that morning and a couple times you know I was still losing a little bit of my plug and it had a little bit of blood streak a little pink tinge to it I just kind of sat around on the couch a little bit more I was thinking about this you know and the contractions were getting a little closer and closer together and a little bit more intense so I started to kind of pick up around the house just kind of walk around and see what they're gonna do and um, I started getting the last-minute things together that I need to get together for the hospital like the miscellaneous bags and all that kind of stuff that I hadn't done yet just in case this was a real thing we were going to the hospital what have you so around 11 o'clock um, a.m. that day we left the house I'd already um, you know and since that morning I had gotten a shower they were still coming regularly in the shower but that did help with um, with the back pain especially um, and they were still coming and then I got ready and just taking my time to get them more consistent um, so about 11 o'clock we left my house and went to Panera and um, got a little something to eat. My husband got a big lunch and I got just a bagel. I didn't feel like I could really eat anything heavy. Um, so I just got a bagel and ate that and then we just started walking around in stores around that area a little bit um, which was near my hospital, my doctor's office. Um, just to kind of help speed things up and then really before we even started walking around so pretty much right after I ate they kind of started slowing down a little bit the contractions so I was like oh well this is great you know why are they slowing down is it because I ate because right when we were walking in to go eat they were coming like some even four minutes apart but still very sporadic so I was kind of confused and kind of aggravated because we'd left the house we've got everything loaded up we were waiting for them to be five minutes apart to um, go to my daughter's office because we'd talked to them around 10 o'clock and they said um, when they get more consistent around five minutes apart for an hour um, and they are getting more intense then we'll see you here in the doctor's office and then you know if need be we'll send you over to the hospital or whatever needs to be done. So that's what we were waiting on. And I finally called them. They weren't like completely consistent or anything, but I called them. I was like, you know, how exactly are they going to know? I'm just ready to see if I've progressed at all, what's going on. So I called my doctor's office and we went in there at two o'clock, about two o'clock is when I saw my doctor. My doctor checked me and I was shocked because I was the exact same as I was at my appointment 
uh, on Monday, and this was Thursday. Um, I was still one centimeter dilated, 90% efface, um, but she was at zero station instead of minus one. So she had moved down a little bit, but all those contractions that I'd been feeling that had gotten closer together and a little bit more painful had done nothing to change anything in there. So I was a little bummed about that and I was kind of like, well, how could that be, you know? He was in there, he went ahead and said that he was gonna stretch my cervix out. And um, when he said that, I was like, well, what about a membrane sweep? And he was like, okay. So he did that and oh my gosh, it was so uncomfortable. I was not expecting it at all. I'd done a lot of research and looked up things, but Oh my goodness, I was like squeezing my husband's hand laying on that table just in pain. It wasn't like awful pain, but I was uncomfortable. He was all up in there and like pressing on my belly and yeah, definitely uncomfortable. But after that, he said I was 90% efface, 3 centimeters dilated, and zero station. And he asked me if I wanted to go home and wait it out or go ahead and go to the hospital, be admitted, and get things on the road. And at this point, I was just so ready. And I was... All that that I had been feeling had done nothing to change my cervix or anything. So I was getting a little discouraged at that time. Um, so I was just like, let's just go ahead and go over to the hospital. Um, let's get this show on the road. And so he was like, okay, we can do that. Um, and the hospital is right next door to my daughter's office. So, um, after all that, we went over to the hospital and at 2.30 p.m. on September 1st, I got admitted and, um, they hooked me up to the IV and at this point, I had already started feeling very uncomfortable and crampy and the contractions were kicking back in, um, from you know, the stretch and sweep that he did, I was definitely feeling it. 